Welcome to the Eventual Nudes Podcast. My name is Leah, I use she, her pronouns, and you can find me on Instagram as Miss underscore LJV. Today is Monday, January 25th, 2021, and I am so happy to be here with you for the first real podcast of 2021. I know a lot of people said it does not bother them when you can see the huge reflection of the ring light in my glasses, but it does really distract me when I'm recording. So I'm sorry I'm bringing it up again, but I'm just letting you know that it bothers me. I might have to go back to using the box lights. I love the convenience of the ring light, but I just don't know if I can handle seeing a giant ring reflected in my eye the entire time that I am talking. <laughs> Anyway, crafting. I feel like I need to change the name of my podcast. I know that I originally have always said that this is not just a knitting podcast, but I think that largely the impression is if you say knit or crochet in your title, that that's the only thing that you do. I have always been doing weaving and a little bit of easy crochet but now I feel like it is becoming a little bit more balanced. So who knows, who knows? What am I wearing? Okay, I guess I'm just gonna hop right into my FOs. The first thing that I am wearing is my Radvent Cardi. You guys, I finished it. Uh, I love it. The Radvent cardigan is a design by Amba O'Brien and she also did a wrap I think and yeah this is my very first cardigan I've ever knit and I used yarn from my advent calendar that I bought this year which was the high fiber arts mythical creatures advent calendar I knew that I really wanted to make a sweater or cardigan out of the yarn that you get out of an advent calendar because sometime last year someone pointed out that you get a significant amount of yarn for an advent calendar far more even than you might need for a sweater especially if you are within standard sizing the amount of yarn that you can get from an advent is more than enough for a sweater and so I thought why not then just knit a sweater it worked out really well I do actually have plenty of yarn left over that I am planning on using in other projects hopefully some sort of scrappy project instead of just collecting uh, dust <laughs> but if you watched my vlog misses you will know that I was pretty nervous about the length or the size of the the arms, the sleeves. So the sleeves are quite big. I mean, my to be clear, my the circumference of my bicep is also very large for my size. But with the size of my bicep, I still have a good like <laughs> ten inches of ease. I swear. It's like, it's probably like eight. Oh, well, it might be 10. It gets even bigger, of course, as you get closer to the um, body, but it it's, it is supposed to be large and oversized. But if you had been watching my 
vlogmas is i i was nervous about how big it was turning out to be but i really really didn't want the cardigan to be too tight around my waist and i'd never made a cardigan before so i was not comfortable with trying to figure out how to widen the waist without messing with the arms so and i also don't know if this is a standard cardigan construction since it's my first one but uh, let me show you how that waist ended up turning out. I am wearing pajama pants. If you didn't get the memo, that is part of the wardrobe of work from home life or of quarantine pandemic life. So if you weren't aware of that, you are now get with the program. So I, I'm standing at a really weird angle because I didn't want to adjust the camera. But notice that the so I think that the pattern actually wants you to have your waist a little bit higher, like up here, where your actual waist is. Which is actually really cute now that I'm holding it <laughs> like that. But um, I wanted it a little bit lower because I feel like everything rides up and I guess this still will. <laughs> but if I just get, I don't have buttons. If I do get buttons, you can see that it sits just fine um, at my more on my hips than on my waist but this is how it did end up working out for me okay now that i showed you guys what it looked would look like if it was a little bit higher i'm kind of like oh damn i should have done that but i didn't want it to be super high up on my waist one because i wanted to use more yarn but two, I was worried about it riding up or just not being something that I would wear often because I want more coverage. Not necessarily for modesty's sake, but for warmth's sake. And speaking of warmth, this is incredibly warm. It's so warm. It is mohair. Oh, the mohair is from Ruby and Roses. And it is fresh linen is the colorway. It's just a white but it is incredibly warm. I will probably be taking it off in just a minute because I am warm in this and it is warm in my house. <laughs> I am also wearing my newest shirt from Lola Bean Yarn Co. And it says Craftivist. So that is the Radvent Cardi by Amba O'Brien. The next finished object that I have is a hat. And it is my first crochet hat, the very first hat that I've ever finished in crochet. And the very first significant thing that I have made with crochet. And it is the Flower Child Beanie by Tony Lipsy. Oh, I love this hat so much. I felt really badass when I was crocheting it up and getting it finished. It is a hat that is actually crocheted flat. I don't know if that's common or not, but it is crocheted flat. You do the ribbing and then you do the extended single crochet until it is an appropriate length. And then you seam up the side and then you seam the top closed or weave in weave in the the top and close it and it looks fine without a palm I actually wore it for a week or so without a pom-pom attached on it but I tend to really like the look of pom-poms on hats and it is nice and slouchy I crocheted the size I did like an in between the child and adult because I have a really small head and I I don't know what my crochet gauge is I don't know if it is larger or smaller than normal whereas i'm very comfortable with my knit gauge my knit gauge tends to be much larger than other people's so i know how to adjust in that way or at least better adjust in that way so a crochet it seems like i'm pretty close because it turned out almost exactly like what they had thought it is still i think it's a little big or then well see now it might actually be the right <laughs> the right size because it's for an adult and I have a small head but in terms of like how big I crocheted it I crocheted it slightly longer than the child size or maybe just around the child size 
and that worked out perfectly for me. The yarn for the hat is a Knit and Bro yarn. Oh, I love this yarn so much. It is a Tweed DK and the color is Snowberry. What a fitting name. I probably showed this on a different podcast, but yeah. So you should definitely check out Knit and Bro and his yarns. Oh, love this hat. I wear it all the time, which is also probably why it's a little bit larger because I'm stretching it out. So that is my second finished object. Around the first of the year, I was really itching to crochet something and I wanted to crochet something that would get done really fast. I did start this hat during that time, but even then it wasn't fast enough. And so I decided to learn how to do a puff stitch. So how what I did with that was I ended up making the Hexi Puff by Tony Lipsy. I don't think I did it perfectly because I wasn't exactly following the directions. If you see any sort of errors, all mine, not Tony's. But I did end up making this Hexi Puff coaster. I really like it. All the stitches are so cute and plush and squishy. This yarn is... Dishy. <laughs> I, just, I knew there was one behind me. It's a dishy twist. Well, this is, it's not twist. It's multicolors or whatever. Dishy multi or something like that. Um, 190 yards, 100 grams. Um, it is a worsted weight and it's 100% cotton. It's from Knit Picks and I also, you can buy it from We Crochet, but I bought mine from Knit Picks and I really liked working with it. Um, of course, it was very splitty because it has so many plies but it wasn't that bad to have to get through and you do pull when you're making hexi puffs or when you're making the little puffs you are pulling your hook through like six loops at a time and it was definitely doable for me so yeah you should check it out um i believe there is a free tutorial for the hexi puff on youtube and finally my last finished object is a set of socks for me. That's right, I have already finished myself a set of socks for the year. So it doesn't look good on um, sock blockers and it also kind of doesn't really look good on my feet either. But <laughs> I did finish a pair of socks, well, it looks all right from back here, in the Link and Zelda self-striping colorways. So this was the Zelda colorway from Peach Queen Yarns. I also bought the Link colorway. And the plan is to knit myself a pair of socks and Steve a pair of socks with one of each. Why do I not have two socks in my hand right now, you ask? Because I don't know where the Link one is. You think that when I wear socks and I take them off that I would take them off in the same spot Apparently that is not always the case because I cannot find where I set the, the link sock. But I will insert a picture of what it looks like. I used a basic rib for the foot. These are toe up. So I cast on the toe. I did a three by one rib up until the heel. And then um, the heel was taken from the magic heel socks by... the autumn acorn and that is a two by two ribbed heel and then I will switch back to a three by one for the rest of the way up I have to sneeze um so I thought that doing ribbed socks would be tighter and then they would stretch stretch right when you're knitting rib it ends up sort of collapsing in right and so you'd think that it would collapse in and then be stretchy what i did not consider about making entirely ribbed socks is that it didn't actually increase the tightness so like think about when you do cables if you do a cable sock or a more highly textured sock it pulls all that material in and makes it tighter so you either want to use a looser gauge or more stitches 
I think for ribbed socks, you need to decrease the amount of stitches you have. So I usually cast on 56 stitches for my foot and that works out well normally, but I'm still experimenting with socks. I do know that socks stretch as you wear them throughout the day and I'm aware of that, but I have an issue with the fact that my foot is so small, but getting socks over my heel is a challenge no matter what I do. So I used a, the Russian bind off for the top. I love the Russian bind off, but again, now this is way too big for my heel, so too big for my ankle. So they pull around my ankle, they fall down, it's fine, I just wear them around the house, but it is a bit disappointing when I'm making my own socks. So. They'll be fine, just comfy socks, but I really like a snug fit on both my foot and my ankle. So I just got to play around more with how many stitches I need for myself and doing ribbing. I love the way this heel looks stretch, or stretched over your real heel. Like I think it looks really nice. I like a good stretched rib, but it looks really goofy on the rest of the foot because it goes rib, 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 flat. I don't know, it just looks really doopy. I don't know how to explain it, but um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try the heel on a more tried and true pattern for Steve's socks and see how that turns out and see if that works out better for him because I'm trying to experiment with heels. If the magic heel which is just basically a ribbed heel. If that ends up working out for the socks, that will blow the game wide open <laughs> on socks because it's so much easier to transition to some kind of a rib than it is to you know increase or decrease and making a heel flap and gusset, whether you're doing top down or toe up. Otherwise, I'm happy with the colors. I just I might just give these ones away and make myself a different pair. There is plenty left. I don't use that because my feet are so small. I don't use that much yarn for my own feet. Okay, so that is everything for my finished objects. As you can see, I have three to four finished objects. And if you watched my 2021 maker plans, you will know that I have a little bingo card. So, I didn't look at my bingo card and say, hey, I wanna to try to make a bingo because the goal of the bingo card is a blackout, not a bingo. But uh, I noticed that when I started crossing out the projects that I am using my FOs for, they all, three of them ended up working out in a straight line. So I crossed out project that uses indie dyed yarn, which is the Radvent Cardi. I didn't want to cross out a project that uses mini skeins or project that uses mohair or cardigan because I want to do more projects with those things. So I used the really easy project that uses indie dyed yarn so that I can still make another cardi, still make another project with mini skeins and still make another project with mohair. So I crossed that one out. I crossed out hat because I made myself a hat, excited, happy about that. And then I also crossed out socks for me. I suppose I could cross out, I thought I had a, oh, scrubby slash dishcloths. I'm not going to yet. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to, maybe let's say for scrubby slash dishcloths, I need to have at least five. Let's say that. And then I will put an image up that shows my bingo card with the appropriate projects crossed out so that you can better look at it, especially if you hadn't seen the bingo card and you're curious as to what my bingo card looks like. My bingo card for 2021 contains 25 projects that I want to make throughout the year. The bottom row contains the three projects that I have crossed off, which are make a project with an indie dye yarn, make a hat for me, and make socks for me. For a more detailed description of my bingo card, please see my Make 25 in 2021 video. I do also have a link to my bingo card. I put it in my episode for my maker plans for 2021. It, I think the episode was called 2021 Make 25. <laughs> 
and I will also include it below as well. Okay, so that's all of my finished objects. Let's talk about my works in progress. I have a lot of things in progress right now. Once the new year hits and my finger pain, I've had some ongoing finger pain for a couple of months. Once that started subsiding, which turns out I think was mostly related to the fact that I had a week and a half off from work and therefore I wasn't using a mouse or typing as much, which is to say that the pain hasn't completely gone away, but it did for a little while and that was amazing. It was so nice to remember what it's like to not have 100% of the time finger and hand and wrist pain. But I cast down a bunch of things and I also have a bunch more ideas and I'm going to talk about a few of them today. I'm not going to probably talk about every single thing that I've started or am working on. And the first thing that I'm working on is a test knit for the lovely Julia of Colleen on Knits. I have done several, well, two, two, at least one test knit for Julia in the past. I actually think I thought I test knit her um, pink peppercorn shawl, but I didn't test knit it, I don't think. I think I just knit it the second it came out because it was amazing, but I could also be mistaken. I wish I could remember. Either way, all of her patterns are super amazing and I love testing for her. So, the Star Anise Cowl. <laughs> So as you can see, the texture is supposed to look like a little star anise, if you know what a star anise looks like. And this yarn is yarn from Bee Woolen, and it is the colorway something monster. It is B Woolen DK in Hungry Monster. So this test is going to result in a very, very squishy cowl. The ribbing is actually a half brioche. And then the star stitch is, and the star stitch is very squishy. Uh, I am about, 40% of the way done and I want to finish that and get it up and ready to go and this will probably end up being one of Steve's more a staple in Steve's wardrobe because he loves things around his neck and it is a lot of fun it's looking so nice and neat like I love brioche if you have not done brioche you should really really try it I had gotten almost halfway on this cowl and then I realized that I had gotten off somewhere in my stitches and this is not the kind of project where you can just rip back to the beginning of the row or even a row back because the beginning of round shifts sort of every um every four rows so it's not, like it doesn't exactly I mean I guess you're not really but it's it's just hard in the four row repeat to sort of find where you were especially if you haven't been paying attention in a while and so you can't just be like okay I'm on the third row so I can go back two rows etc and I had been taking my knitting all around and not paying attention at all to which one I was on and I think it was a combination of dropping a stitch and since the stars are made with yarn overs, if you drop a yarn over and it disappears, it's hard to remember how to get it back and pick it up. But if you're paying better attention, I have proven to myself that even if you do mess up one of the stars, if you can identify that you messed up the star, you can drop down the right number of rows and fix it. Because I did that yesterday and it worked out beautifully, but I also have been paying more attention to my knitting. So when I had gotten to that place, I tried to fix it. I definitely didn't fix it correctly. And then it kind of threw off the entire pattern. And so I, not knowing what to do from there, I just ripped all the way back to the brioche and started over. And this amount of work is a couple hours of progress, um, dedicated knitting yesterday or the day before. 
So it's not a huge amount of effort. And yeah, I could encourage you to check out that pattern when it comes out. And B Woolen is a local yarn shop to me ish. I mean, it's not exactly exactly local, but it's local to the Twin Cities ish. It's in Champlin, Orinoca. I think it's Champlin, Minnesota. And that is the Star Anise test. The next project that I am working on is the Lo Suoso by Nitty Natty by Natalie Coons. She was wearing a Lo Suoso on one of her podcasts or one of her like day in the life. She, she does a lot of videos so I don't exactly know which one it was but I, I think it actually was one of her recent podcasts and before she mentioned it I was staring at it and I was like oh my gosh that looks so cozy and so comfy and fluffy and cute and she mentioned it's one of her own patterns and I looked on Ravelry just because that's where I know that the projects are that it exists and sh there have been like 19 projects of it and it is a very simple uh, looking knit. It looks like it, it knits up pretty quickly and so I just bought it and I went out to buy some yarn for it and as you can see I have an okay amount of of um, lace and my plan was to I think my plan was to, I think my plan was to use this sort of like white gray and this is a Mockingbird Fiber Co. yarn. And so I went to my local yarn store, my actual local yarn store. It's in Woodbury, Minnesota. It's called Knitting from the Heart. And I picked up a skein of Malabrigo Washed. The pattern calls for a worsted weight single ply to get that sort of fluffy look. And I got this, but then I have this yarn and it was shipped with this yarn. So Fiber Nymph Dye Works does some sales sometimes with old kits of theirs or additional yarn that they have extra of and this is rain clouds and tie-dye collection warm tie-dye variegated and it was a skein of slob yarn and so I separated this yarn into two separate skeins 50 grams each and I am just holding it double I don't know if it'll end up looking as cute as Natalie's, but I really wanted to use this bright, happy yarn. And if I did my math correctly, splitting the slub yarn in, in two 50 gram skeins is okay. It will work out just fine. I don't even think you're gonna use all, I'm gonna use all of the mohair either. And so I haven't gotten very far. <laughs> But here it is. So of course it looks kind of wrinkly and whatnot, but if I pull on it a little bit, you can see how, how nice, cute it looks with the big mohair um, little stitches. And I just really like the pattern. I don't know what it's gonna look like with the slub yarn once it's finished, but as you can see, it's already, I mean, it's very squishy and so soft, and I hope that it ends up looking cute. The way that it is supposed to be knit is, it's about eight inches, and then it'll, you'll, it's knit flat, and then you seam it together, and then it's a, you know, a double cowl. And I cannot wait, it looks so cozy and comfy. But I just remembered I have a story about the yarn. Okay, so I remember that Natalie was saying 
for her socks, she really likes to split her yarn up so that she can get the exact same sock with the exact same self-striping pattern. And none of that matters to me. But she talked through her process of how she figures out how to make the skein, the two half skeins, the same length or in evenly distributed skeins. And for some reason, I would, you guys, I don't know what I was thinking, but I had been winding it up, do 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 do, winding it up, and I was like, okay, well, I, I wonder if this is enough. <laughs> you guys. Like, why do I do st Oh, I'm smearing my makeup all over my face. Why do I do this to myself? Please help me. So not only did I first try to take the half wound skein off of the winder and weigh it, but then when that didn't work out so well, or no, yeah, that was fine, but it was really hard. I couldn't get the skein back on the um, winder. So then I tried to take the I took the skein that was on the Swift and boosted it up and put it on the scale just to make sure that I had weighed it appropriately. And then I of course proceeded to get my yarn all tangled and then had to spend the rest of the time detangling slash winding at the same time because slub yarn the nature of slub yarn is to have, you know, the thin bits and then, you know, the slubs or whatever, the little nubbins that are um, spun in a bunch. And because of that, when you're trying to detangle, you can't pull the yarn through because it will always get caught, always, because of the little the nubs. And so it was a very painstaking, slow process. It actually wasn't horribly tangled exactly. It was just like a couple strands had gotten off and that just required to detangle the entire skein while I wound it up. Please don't make the same mistake I did, okay? Be smarter than I was. Be smarter. And the way to be smarter is wind the entire skein up into a cake take the cake off, put it on a scale, and then start winding a new cake. Yes, that does require you to wind like three cakes basically, because you may have the big cake and then you put the strand on the winder and then you wind it until the scale says 50 grams. Or in my case, it had initially weighed in at 102 grams. And so I just did 51 per. And so you wind it, wind it, wind it until the scale says 51. And now you know you have two 51 gram uh, cakes, but because I a center pole ball is going or cake is going to be the easiest, then that first one that you initially wound up will be sort of collapsing or falling apart. So then you cut the yarn and then you re skein, rewind up, re cake that first skein, and then you'll have two equally sized, non tangled, non nightmare cakes for your project. As you can see, I ended up with one cake and one ball. This was the hand wound ball from the tangle. <sighs> Please learn. Don't do what I did. <laughs> but anyway, that is Lesuoso by Nitty Natty. This project is living in why do people never oh they do this is paisley and gold i love this bag you guys it is a canvas bag it is very like i don't know it has really good texture to it and it has a really cool handle it i mean you can draw a string it closed but then it has a handle that you just put through and you can pull and i just adore it not that i'm going anywhere but even just walking around the house it's just easy to carry okay the next work in progress that I have is actually a retreat that I'm taking a part in, kind of. It's really low key and relaxed. And so I don't know, I mean, I paid for the retreat and it has additional perks and stuff like that, but 
I'm mostly engaging in a knit group for um, that the creators of Knit Reno are putting on. So Knit Reno is a knitting app and it is actually super neat. I freaking love how, so let's say like, so this is what Knit Reno looks like. Actually, I'm gonna just record it and then put it in the in explaining what Knit Reno is. So Knit Reno was designed as an app for interactive knitting patterns from indie designers. Not just knitting, of course, crochet as well. And the patterns are inserted into the app. They have, are vetted and added into the app so that you can interact with them while you create the pattern. So here I picked the Solaris wrap in order to work on knitting it. You see that it started where I left off. It pulls up the row and if I slide my finger, it moves up to the next row. If I slide my finger down, it moves to the previous row. It's awesome. One of the projects is the Solaris wrap and it is a very beautiful wrap. And I didn't buy the kit for the wrap because I wanted to use my own yarn. I have plenty of fingering weight yarn. So what I ended up choosing for the wrap are two skeins of hand, uh, hand dyed by Meadow Yarn, or just called Meadow by Meadow Yarn maybe. And it's Who Suck, 75% wool, 25% nylon, 425 meters per 100 grams. And look at this color. So I had two of these. I have had these two skeins for a couple of years now. And when I got them, I really didn't know what I would do with a, such a variegated looking skein. And I thought the Solar Strap would be perfect because notice that when it's wound up, you see all these additional little bits of color. It went perfectly with my Muse 2320 Fiber, another local yarn store that's in Hastings, Minnesota. And this is their, I can't read that font, Oran, Orane, Orane Wife, I don't know. It's a fingering weight um, and it's in a blackberry compote. Is it compote? Compote? I've never heard the word said out loud and I know it's not an uncommon word. I've just never looked it up. Is it comp compote? Anyway, it's a blackberry. It's more red than there you go. This is this is right. And it look it matches really well to this skein. Like the these bits that are showing up way more pink in the camera are actually pretty deep. And so they work really well together. I have only been working on it during knit nights and slowly because again, aforementioned finger pain. But this is what I have so far. I am 30 rows in. And it is, again, already so like decadently squishy and very, um, there's a lot of little bits that just hold your interest and every single time I'm knitting those stitches they just blow me away like these little these little peaks here and here so you continue in this pattern for quite a while before you actually this is like part of the beginning of the shawl it's going to be quite a big wrap I mean it uses four full skeins of fingering weight yarn that is a lot of yardage and so it'll take a while, but I am excited to be using this yarn finally. And we, we're, I'm ending up with our just sort of like, there's some pooling and some striping, but I think that it's working out really well. And it's been really cool. This is a group of people who I have enjoyed getting to know a little bit better. And I think I've mentioned on here before, it's been kind of hard for me to feel like I want to be a part of many different knit groups that I have tried that I just don't really fit in. Not that 
not that they don't think I fit in with them, but more like maybe our interests outside of knitting, maybe our interests in types of yarn, our interests in, um, in social justice, or just what we might do with our free time. I don't know, there's just so many things that go into feeling like you are a part of a group and not just attending a group. And I, this is the closest I felt in trying any groups really um, that I actually felt like a part of. Now, that isn't to say that there's some groups that I've been a guest of that I haven't enjoyed, but I think that it's like I, I just was a guest, like I wasn't invited to always come or whatever, you know. So anyway, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. We've been meeting on Wednesdays for an hour and it's been really low key and fun to hang out. So that is my, my Solaris wrap. I encourage you to check out Knit Reno and download it. It is an app and yeah. The last thing I want to talk about is an extremely ambitious project that I have started and I am so excited about it. And it is called the Promise Dress by HG Designs Crochet. And it really, at its, I mean, it, it is just a granny square dress. And I don't know if it's gonna look terrible on me. I don't know if it's even gonna fit, but HG Designs Crochet looks so cute in hers. And so it really made me want to try it. And not only because it's a fun, ambitious dress project, but because I have so many minis that I want to get rid of. So I decided to take my giant bowl of mini skeins and start using them in this dress. The dress does call for a, t a DK yarn. I do know that fingering held together is more of a worsted. Do I care? No. So this is what I've got so far. So as you can see, I am holding my minis marled and so double and marled and I'm getting some really interesting looks. I'm trying really hard to be random and not really think that hard about how it's looking. Obviously I'm not going to pair colors together that looks absolutely hideous, but I am trying to be as random as possible. Last year for my advent calendar I did a Brazen Stitchery advent and Brazen Stitchery did self striping. So I'm getting to a point where I, so let's say, let's say that I paired these two yarns together. I don't think I actually have, but let's say I did. And you notice that I still have, <laughs> like these crochet granny squares use so little yarn. So my plan is to just keep pairing random yarns together until I am using basically all of, oh, I dropped one of my skeins in my coffee. <laughs> Um, just keeping it real. <sighs> anyway, I'm trying to use as much of it as possible and so I'm going to reuse them hopefully in creative ways and to make it so that they, I use up, actually use up skeins. And then my plan is anything, anything that I don't use up in this dress, I will use in a like granny stripe br blanket like any sort of scrappy blanket and just like keep adding to it and use up those skeins. I haven't decided yet if the remains of my Radvent Cardi or the remains of the advent calendar that I got from High Fiber Arts, if I will use that in this dress or not because it is a sparkly yarn. It has um, uh, Stellina in it and I don't know if I want to mix plain sock and Stellina yarn. Um, 
haven't decided yet so we'll see if I do if if I don't then I'll just fully use those in a scrappy stripy blanket that does not bother me at all I also don't plan on really thinking that hard about making a stripy blanket I will just cr use up all of the yarn until it ends and then just pick up where I left off and keep going and I think that will be really nice I love seeing people scrappy blanket projects um, the yarn that I'm using uh, to connect it all together is a navy and it is a Barocco Vintage DK. I love, love a Barocco Vintage DK. I think it is really soft and it feels um, very nice on my skin and it's easy to use and that is actually DK. And as you can see, I, oh, this will probably be, when I finish it, if I do finish it, it will probably be a new technique, maybe, a new to me technique because I certainly have never done a continuous join as you go. And I've also never done granny squares. Hmm. Multiple skills, guys. Leveling up. So again, that is Promise by HG Designs Crochet. So I think that is it for all of my works in progress. I did get a lot of motivation to start a temperature blanket for this year. I have decided that if slash when I do a temperature blanket this year, it will be crochet, which I think is way easier and faster than knitting. I particularly like the, there are two examples that are in the TLYC Makers, Tony Lipsy's uh, Facebook group. And actually it's the same person, I think, but two different blankets. And they used, it's almost like a bar graph and it's not almost like, it is a bar graph of the highs and lows for the year. And it's just a really cool striking look at the temperatures. So I set out to do my own. The challenge is though, that I live in a state that has temperatures above and below zero. Not only that, and oh, the examples, the example, for two years had it, what looks to be temperatures that are only above zero and so there's you know it's a flat graph and everything is up there's nothing down and so I thought oh that'd be really cool to show when it goes below zero so that's one thing but then another thing is if you do the highs and the lows I don't know if she made them in such a way where you, she just did the, let's say, the entire bar for low and then just added additional stitches for to make the difference up for the high. Or if she included the entire high and the entire low. Where this would get tricky, of course, is let's say in the summer when it gets to be between 90 and 100 degrees, am I really going to have, you know, a low of 85 and, which is 85 stitches and then a high of 95 and then an additional 95 stitches. That's a lot of stitches. My plan, I think when I originally cast on, I did cast on you guys, I had cast on like 180 maybe. I might have even been more than that. I'm tr I was making it huge. I want it to be a pretty large blanket. So I did my border, or the initial edging, I should say, and then I tried to do two days worth. The part that I did not consider is, let's say you do day one going this way, and then you do day two going that way. My stitches were off in, on the way back. It did, not, it did not line up correctly. So that was my first error. But then my second error is trying to figure out, am I doing the entirety of both days or of both temperatures of the high and the low? If you have ideas, let me know. Instead, I ended up with a long snake of three, three rows or four rows or something like that. And it was not worth it for me to, I had, I had been so into this idea that I had crocheted each row and then I'd already woven in the ends and cut the yarn for that, those days because I was so like, yep, this is what I'm doing, going for it. And then it didn't work out and I ended up tossing the whole thing. <laughs>
and now it's the 25th of January and I have done nothing. Again, that's not to say that I won't do anything, but if you have any suggestions or ideas on making this a feasible blanket project for, I want the highs and the lows. It's so important to me to have the highs and the lows. When I did the temperature scarf two years ago, instead of doing the high or the low, I took the average of the two temperatures. I that's still like not enough for me though, but that is what I did. I took the average of the two temperatures to try to balance it out, especially, or maybe I didn't. Maybe I did the highs, but I, did, I changed the texture of the row based upon whether or not it was higher or lower than the average temperature, the expected temperature. I just want the highs and the lows. I want both. I want you to be able to see, hey, you know what? It warmed up to three degrees Fahrenheit today, but it started at negative 15. You know, like I want to be able to see the full range of temperatures on any given day, especially because I live in a state with pretty extreme temperatures and I want to, to visually see the difference. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Okay. I think the last two things that I want to do is show you some yarn that I'm excited for and talk about a yarn swap that I'm doing. I have three companies I'm going to showcase today. The first one is a person who goes by the name Passion Knits Yarn and she has been dyeing yarn since 2018 and I really love her yarns. I haven't had a chance to buy a lot I don't think or or enough for like a full project and but I did just get a recent order from her and it is these two skeins I am in love with both this first one is called Marchan and it is a slub fingering weight the yarn base name is vivacious And it has yellows and reds and oranges and it's just like a very bright, happy, exciting color and I love it. The second skein is called Sea Witch, which reminds me of Ursula, if it's not. And it is this awesome yarn that has starts out with this like nice purple and then it goes into like this navy purple. Oh, I just love it and I am a sucker for tweed and you know it and this is a DK the base is tantalizing tweed oh I love this love it so you should definitely check out passion it's yarn she has tons of bases and lots of different kinds of yarn and they're all rich saturated gorgeous colors she is just a single person who does her yarns and she doesn't get nearly as much love as she deserves Secondly, I just want to gush a little bit about Brewery Alana. I finally got some of her um, sport weight yarn in the colorway that I have been coveting for so long. And that color is, of course, Flicker. And I did get three skeins. It is a black with pops of yellow or gold. And I only bought three skeins because I was so worried about getting cart jacked. Um, her yarns sell out within like 30 seconds. Um, she works really hard to have affordable yarn. Her yarn is way underpriced. But the reason why I want her yarn is because of how pretty it is. But so I just went for three skeins because they're 270 yards a piece. So 274 yards a piece. So three is at least enough for a crop and I could add in black if I wanted to or something, whatever, a yellow. I could do something to mix it up if I didn't end up having enough or I could just try to buy more flicker at some point. But three skeins is at least something and I'm so, oh my God, you guys, I have been wanting this yarn for so long. Brewery Lana does updates on the exact same day every single month. So if you go to her Instagram, she does go through each of her yarns and the, and uh, talk about her bases and her colors and her grid is also very aesthetically pleasing. So, yay, Flickr. 
Also from her shop, I bought a clay pin created by Don Landix. It's a little yarn ball pin. It's so cute. It, I was so torn between choosing this one and the one that is actually in Flickr. So it's a black with a little flex of yellow. But ultimately, come on, I had to pick this like purple. And finally, because it's been a long time, probably not, I don't know, since the last time I talked about Knit Circus, but I really had to show up. They have a recently released colorway called Femme Fatale. I bought the Impressionist or it's Femme Fatale Impressionist, and I bought the Greatest of Ease base, which is a fingering 400 uh, yards. Oh, look at this. It is the center. It's not a gray. It's a very deep pur purple, like wine color in the center, and it goes out into this vibrant pink, and I just love it. I considered whether or not I wanted socks. I could also always knit socks out of this, but I just feel like this would look like a beautiful shawl. Beautiful. And again, I like the shawls that are more like scarves anyway. So yeah, those are the yarns that I wanted to show off this time. The last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that in our Knit Reno group, we are doing a yarn swap. And the yarn swap terms are supposed to be that you pick a designer I am so not with the words today, you guys. I don't know why I keep saying words that I don't mean to be saying. For the yarn swap, you're supposed to share yarn either from your stash that you love or from a dyer you love. So I guess you could pick a dyer and buy a skein of yarn from them for that person. But like, I really like the idea of finding a skein in your stash and, and sending it to them. And I wanted to pick yarn who, where the dyer is someone I'm so excited about and want to share and not just like a throwaway skein. And to be clear, <laughs> none of my skeins are throwaway ever, but there are some that I may have gotten in a mystery grab bag or that I got from someone else or something like that, that I wouldn't mind parting with. Um, but it turns out that that's more of, of in the past because I am not joking. I went through every single skein in my stash and I want all of them. I remember where I got them. I remember who I got them from. I just, I just love all of the skeins in my stash. So I went through my stash like three different times and I finally found three skeins that I am willing to part with. Uh, well, my criteria was like not a throwaway and also someone I really wanted to showcase. And it, and so I picked out a skein of self-striping that I was okay with parting with, but I mean, it took a long time to like get to that point. Um, a skein from a worsted weight skein that I'll probably never use. And then a, um, I'm looking at my pile over there of ones that I had selected from my stash. And then a sort of, not a gradient exactly, but kind of like a gradient. And then my swap partner, I asked like, what does she tend to knit and or make? And you know, what kind of yarn does she want to use? And she said that she primarily makes shawls. And so I weeded out the self-striping. I didn't want to like give that to her. She wasn't going to use it. She said she specifically doesn't like knitting socks. So <laughs> I didn't want to give her self-striping. Um, especially the color that I had picked out. But the skein that I picked out in sort of the speckly gradient um, is perfect for a shawl. It can be a shawl by itself, it's 400 yards, but then I found another skein that went with it that were, if I were to use that skein, that I would probably pair it with. And so that is yarn that would technically be repurposed from a um, peep shawl um, year. Like it was, the, it was the main skein in a, a year for Peep, the Progressive East End project uh, that I do most years. And that's okay because there are plenty of yarns that I could pair with my mini skeins for that anyway. And they go really well together and that is then 800 yards for a shawl. And I think that that would be really nice to get enough yarn for a full project. So I love putting stuff together for people and I love sharing yarns. 
I am unwilling to part with all of this. And it is so funny because people who have no connection to the fiber community, like my family and stuff, um, anyone who come and some friends who come over or came over pre pandemic anyway, um, look at my stash and they're like, what are you going to do with all this yarn? And it's like, I need every single skein that's in my stash. And if anything, it was just really reaffirming to me that my stash is, while large, is curated. And I have, um, if Christmas or like holidays, my birthday and holidays are any indication, I have been really training um, people who want to buy yarn for me to buy the yarn that I'm going to like. And it is awesome. It is it's totally doable, you guys. At the very worst, you can ask for gift cards to specific places, which sometimes I do get, but um, some of my family are getting braver in trying to find actual yarn that I like versus just a gift card. And gift cards are great and fine, and I love them, but, um, and actually, I, I got this yarn with a gift card um, from, from Christmas, but yeah people can definitely be trained to get you yarn that you like so i'm just loving it and i'm loving making and that's pretty much it that's all i've got for you today you guys thank you so much for stopping by if you are a new viewer welcome this is pretty much how my podcasts go if you're a returning viewer i'm so happy you are here and i look forward to seeing you again soon bye